Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and uh, it's no secret that the latest unsanctioned, uh, well, I hate to say set, more of a pre-made deck product, is uh, not being received well by everyone in the community because it's not designed for everybody in the community. Now, whether that's a, a smart idea or not, or what they should have done, that, that's a whole different thing, I'll touch on that later. But for now, well, you know how Mark Rosewater gets excited about literally everything... But uh, unsurprisingly, oh, I intended that pun, he gets really excited about unsets because they're silly and wacky and contain references and jokes to Magic's past and all that. I mean, everybody likes unsets, but as far as going out and actually buying this product, you know, I'd say maybe 10% of the community tops would like even be considering it. But uh, yeah, something kind of hilarious went on, on on Twitter the other day. What else is new? On February 1st at 1.16 in the morning, which is when all the best tweets go out, I'd love to think that this was a drunk tweet, but it was pretty well composed and punctuated. Mark wrote, I've gotten a lot of comments today on Unsanctioned, and I wanted to say something. The Full Art Lands are a sweet dessert, but they aren't the main course. Unsanctioned is for players who love uncards. If that's not your cup of tea, then this might just not be the product for you. Let's see, that seems condescending and butthurt, and, like, if you look at the rest of the replies to the replies to this tweet, yeah, he's just, like, kind of going off on people, because I guess he wants, like, everybody to love it or whatever, I don't know, realistically, he should have known that this set was not for everyone, and, you know, if 90% of the people say, I don't like it, I'm not gonna buy it, he should just be like, well, yeah, that's what it is, but he seems to maybe be getting a little too offended about this, because, you know, he's a little bit too excited about either stuff he designed or, or products he really likes. Which, once again, does appear to be absolutely everything. In fact, I feel like if he's at Denny's and they come ask him if he wants more coffee, he's like, Yes! More coffee! Woo! Oh, another magic product! Awesome! I am so excited! A lot of people think, oh, it's an act, it's a marketing thing, he's basically Steve Ballmer. But, I don't know, I feel like it's also his personality. But hey, I'll take him over a boring person, you know, anytime. Or the people who are, like, too cool to get excited or happy about something. I hate those people. So now, I should probably explain my stance on this product um, b before I go commenting on everybody's uh, Twitter replies. Because I'm going to seem to contradict myself, but um, okay. This product isn't for everyone. Mark needs to realize that. Some uh, members of the community think, well, uh, it should have been made for everyone. I got the approximated print numbers for like a tiny side product, um, especially a sealed product and compared it to, like, the, the just gross income that they make from Standard, I think it ended up being, like, um, they, they take in just, just not net profit, none of that, just gross income. On Standard per set, I think it's, like, somewhere between 80 million to, like, a quarter billion. Like, it, it's insane. Uh, but then you look at, like, Jace's Spellbook, or, like, something real, real limited and in, in kind of, like, a little you know, smaller print run product, a little pre-made thing that some people might be interested in for a lower price. It's, like, two to three million. I mean, even, uh, you, you could do the exact numbers on, uh, what was it, the, the Mythic Edition, because they said, well, we're making this many. It's a handful of million dollars. They might just think, oh, yeah, a couple million. Ha ha, I'd love a million dollars. But if you look at the sheer volume of standard... It really doesn't matter if they were to sell double or half of one of these. So if they make it for a tiny little, like, collector's market or people who just love, you know, fun, interesting, weird, quirky gameplay, like, haha, magic parody stuff, just multiplayer wacky fun with friends, which is what this unset was. Cool, good for them, happy customers. For everybody else, it's like, whatever, don't buy it. They they really don't care how well it does because, like I said, it, it could be like, oh, we, we made it a little bit better and increased the sales by 20%. Who cares? It just went from like three million to three and a fraction million. Like, so what? Go look at standard. I mean, more money is more money, but you know, put the effort into what matters. Cause it's probably like all these little side products and stuff added up through the year could be like 1% of their net income. So it, it does not matter how these do. It just doesn't. They make them to make them. Whoever buys them, buys them. They don't want to get stuck with them. And that's all that's really important. Profitability on like these game night and like dual decks and all that. It's, who cares so if you're like oh they should have made one for a wider audience they should have made it so that more people buy it um no not really if if there's a small subset of the community that's been just waiting and waiting and waiting for an unset because they love on and they like fun and they like the funny cards and they want to collect them give them what they want if the other 90 percent of people don't want it that's fine you're making it for those people you're making them happy then you hit a different group the next time then you hit a different group the next time so like you do conspiracy three next and oh those are for people who really love crazy cool drafts 
And people who don't want draft are like, well, I don't care. I'm not buying this. This isn't for me. What a, what a dumb waste of time. Well, not really. It's a side product. Now that said, those make a little bit more. There are some kind of mid-range products where they make quite a bit. Um, like Commander, that that really hauls in the money, those Commander decks. And, uh, you know, like draft sets and like side sets where they're full sets, full release, like Battle Bond. They don't make anywhere near as much as standard, but they're they're not even in the same classification as like a signature spell book, whatever, where, it, oh, it made two million, who cares? So those they have to kind of care about. So the bigger it is, the more like carefully made it is, the more effort that goes into it, and the more they print, the more they have to care about how many people buy it, which is why Battle Bond and Conspiracy had some serious value added to them. On purpose, they put money reprints in there. If they just went, no, this is purely a draft set, and then you add it all up in the box, EV is $25, because it's just for draft and they didn't put, you know, Birds of Paradise in it or anything, you know, new for Commander. Only draft people would buy it, which brings me back to this unset and why people seem to be so mad. They are used to, no matter what it is, no matter what they make, no matter what they release, and if you think about, the, like, the last 30, 40, 50 products they've made, this is true. Whether you wanted it or not or were on the fence or were like, absolutely, yes, I love this, I'm buying it, anywhere on that spectrum... If you were to buy it, especially online for its lowest possible market price in the world, and then open it and sell part of it or all of it, you could be expected to get the majority of your money back, if not make a profit. That That's just what it is. That was true for Signature Spellbook Jace. You could sell, you know, the majority of them, keep whatever you want, and, and you would probably get your extremely low amount of money out of it. It was like $19.99 MSRP. You could get that out of it. You could sell 90% of the cards, probably get that out in all likelihood. I mean, shipping and fees was a thing because that's flat and, you know, whatever. But, you know, generally, like, if, if you were to buy a box of Battle Bond or a box of Conspiracy to take the crown, you could likely open it and get your money out. Now, this is all on average. You could open a $50 box or you could open a $250 box. You know, there's variants. But if you were to open 100 boxes, you could very predictably make money on those sets or break even. And that's what people are used to. I mean, it's like you, you could go to your shop and buy all five commander decks and sell three of them and probably just about get your two for free, if not, you know, subsidize them heavily or make a profit somewhere in that area. Just throw them up at eBay, Craigslist, Facebook, whatever, you know, I guess buy list, but eh. And ta-da, you just got like a free magic product for putting in a tiny bit of effort or like go pretty big scale. I mean, <laughs> the, the best example I can give is uh, if I wasn't able to make a ton of money on Ultimate Masters, um, I probably would have bought like a third of a box total, but probably not even. I mean, what was it, like 280, 300 box or something like that? I don't just have that sitting around, but I would like to, you know, open it, get some singles, get some, you know, high-powered cards, some trade stuff, keep some fancy cards, and then sell the majority to pay for the majority of the box, if not entirely pay for it to make a tiny profit. But instead of buying one box because, uh, you know, it had a pretty good value and I, I could literally buy it sealed and sell it sealed, I mean, at the distributor level, uh, but, you know, you guys could have pre-ordered it for pretty low and then, you know, gotten pretty close to distributor prices from people who couldn't foresee the future very well. And if they stuck to it, you could have, like, gotten it in the mail, listed it, slapped another label on it, sent it right back out in the mail and pocket 100 bucks profit. So because I could do that as well, a little bit easier from having a distributor account, Instead of buying one box, I bought whatever about 14 grand was. And the reason I bought that much is because it was the limit on my credit card. If they would have taken my second credit card, um, which they, they didn't like that one, I would have bought another 21 grand because that's the limit on that one. I mean, how much are you going to buy? How much money do you want to make? Like, it's, it's practically a sure thing at that point. Same with Commander. The last Commander product that came out when I still had a store, I bought like 12 grand worth of it because I knew I'd make like two to $3,000 profit. And I did. So players have in their mind, no matter what I buy, it's going to be worth it. There's going to be value. Even the, the mental thing of like, well, maybe if I sell it, maybe if I have to, you know, trade in the singles, trade it to somebody else, you know, binder trade, local trade, buy list selling, TCG player, eBay, where, however you want to liquidate them in their head, they're like, okay, the value is there. I'm not really spending money. I'm investing it. And then they never sell it. Like it's just, it's just in their head. Like it's a, it's a nice little comfort, you know, safety blanket. It's a wonderful thought you can keep in your mind that will justify buying a product that you were on the fence of or that you honestly didn't even want, but you're like, yeah, but the value though, like if I'm spending 12 bucks on this pack, I'm probably going to get 18 out of it. Cool. Yeah, I can make money. And then you buy it and spend the money and never, never trade the card. I mean, a lot of people buy list something eventually, but, uh, whether people actually flip them or whether people just mentally think they're going to, and then don't people are comfortable with value this unsanctioned product oh my gosh you were gonna lose 90 percent of the value the second you walk out the door 
It's terrible, and it's all because the lands aren't good enough. They're really ugly looking. They aren't full bleed. Um, the people are calling it different things: full art, extended art, whatever. It's all the same crap to me. It's just it's full bleed art to the edge. I think the frame's ugly. I think the art is nothing special, and compared to the last unset, just no. And the last unset, everybody know the uncards. I mean, people want them, but they don't need them to play. So a couple people wanting them versus people actually needing them to build a deck. I mean, that's the difference between a twenty dollar card and a fifty cent card, honestly. Like, even the, like, foil mythics from that set were, like, a couple dollars. Every pack you open, you got a, a land worth, what, an average of $2.50? It almost just about paid for the damn pack, because that's where the value was. And these days, I think the lands are above that, so you can actually make a profit now. Not to mention if you pulled, like, a foil island, oh my gosh. So, if somebody was like, yeah, Un's kind of cool, but I'm not going to drop, you know, two ninety nine a pack on it, or three ninety nine or whatever the hell it was. Unless you think, oh, but I could trade away the lands. I could sell them eventually. I could sell them right now, and then I could just keep the uncards. I mean, you know what that does to sales? It probably multiplies by 10, if not 100. You know how many people didn't give a crap about drafting or Conspiracy Tube and then found out it had a really good return on money and started uh, buying them or asking for them as prizes for F&M? Just the demand skyrocketed for it because it had value. It, it's that simple. If something has value, people want it, no matter if they wanted it or not. That's why people are freaking out so hard about this unsanctioned set. The lands are like worthless and there's nothing else in it that's worthwhile. So Mark is correct when he says it's not for everyone. It might not be the product for you, but the community is right when they say, yeah, but we're used to, you know, having the option to buy it if we're kind of on the fence or just kind of want it or we want it, but we're going to trade away the expensive stuff, just sell the lands and then get a, a highly subsidized price. And with this one, we can't do that. So I'm not buying it. It's a badly designed product. I would say, yeah. It just would be nice if everybody knew they're getting the value out of it. Now, that said, if they made it so that effectively, like, you could buy it for 40 and there was 80 bucks worth of um, cards in it, everybody would clean out the entire inventory. People would just buy it to sell it, buy it to flip it, that's that, and the people who really wanted it wouldn't be able to get it, which is what happened with uh, Eternal Masters the first time. It was intended to be a very draftable set, and then stores literally could not hold drafts because they were sold out on day one, if not beforehand. In fact, that was the reason that Wizard stated that they ran a second run, a smaller run of Eternal Masters, and they gave strict instructions to stores to say, hey, if at all possible, use these to run a draft event, don't just sell them. Because they were getting mountains of complaints online about everybody like saying, I'd love to draft this, this looks like an absolute riot to draft, but all four stores in my area were sold out, so I didn't get to draft it. And they were like, okay, we got to do something about this. Plus, I mean, it was like over 300 a box. Of course, they're going to do a second run of it. If they didn't, that's literally just leaving money on the table. So I don't like it where they're like, here's a set that's for a small amount of collectors. Oh, it's just a little tiny niche product. And then everybody goes out to buy it because they can flip it for double. It's like this whole, like, everybody knows what's really going on thing, and, you know, it's it's just dumb. And the same thing almost goes for Commander consistently. People who are like, wait a minute, I could buy this for, like, what, 110 or something for the full pack of five? And then I could sell four of them and keep one and ma it still make a profit? And then they just go to the store and be like, I'll take four? Or I'll take ten, I'll take twenty, you know, pre-order fifty of them online, I mean, whatever. I mean, I, I bought at least twelve grand worth. I mean, it's limited by, like, how much money do you want to make and how much how much time do you want to spend putting them in a box and slapping a label on it, which is it was super difficult and time-consuming, not. So if they had packed, like, let's get crazy with this. Okay, instead of mylar foil made of aluminum, they take um, uh, gold and electroplate the mylar, which honestly is like a cent worth of gold per card. Then use, I don't know what they use, probably dye sublimation printing to print directly on the mylar material and then bond it to the card. That's literally how they make foils, by the way. So if they use gold electroplated foil, which is how they make, like, gold foil playing cards and all that, and I think uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! does gold. I don't think uh, Pokemon does, maybe. But if they did that for the lands, I mean, those lands would be $7, $8. Like, it would be insane. So you could buy this product for, I don't know, 30 bucks, and it would be worth, like, 100 Everybody would just be, like, stabbing each other in the parking lot to, like, get a pre-order and steal it from each other. I mean, distribution of a valuable product where you can make money, all of a sudden everybody turns into a backstabbing asshole. So if they did that, yes, it would be a very popular product that would sell very well, but it would be like, it, it wouldn't even be an unset and it wouldn't be for people who want unsets. It would just be, here's more money, yay, everybody buy it, oh, look, we got more money from the collectors and, and everybody who's, um motivated enough and has the means to do it is going to buy it, flip it and make a profit. So like hooray to all of you, you now own your own little mini distribution company. 
And uh, to the collectors buying up all them, good, more money from the whales who want, you know, a whole deck full of 50 gold-plated foils. And it, it would just be another cash grab, and it, it, like I said, it just wouldn't be an unproduct for people who want unproducts. But do I think they should have done that, just packed mountains of value in it to make it sell better? Not really, because in the spirit of the product, it, it wouldn't have worked. So that's why I think the Mark Rosewater does have a little bit of a point. But when people are poking it apart saying, I don't like the lands, I don't like this, there's no value, I'm not going to buy it because it's worth like $5 they all have a point and that's not what people are used to it's just he needs to just like let it go like he, they know what they made this time around they, they know that most people won't like it won't want it won't buy it it is what it is and since it's a side product it doesn't matter financially on their books it's a drop in the bucket it does not matter but um wow was mark getting sarcastic and stuff it would appear i mean it's hard to you know get intent and like inflection that kind of stuff from a tweet but that said, let's read some of them. Although I did say I'm going to set up my opinion so I don't look uh, contradictory. I think everybody's wrong. What they should have done instead of wasting their time on this bullshit. I mean, yeah, it's cool for people who wanted it, whatever. Great. Same with the secret lair. Like you don't need it to play. It's you could ignore it completely, which is good. I hate ones where it, like you do need to buy it to play like the gift packs. If you wanted the, the angel from like M20 from the gift pack, then you had to pretty much buy the gift pack. I mean, singles are a thing, but... When they come out with a new product and you actually need it to play the game, that's bad. When they come out with something completely optional and you can take it or leave it, great. And, you know, like the cats one for people who really like cats or really like rats or really like whatever. I don't remember what else was in it because I didn't buy it and who cares. Good. The collectors who love alternate art funny looking cat cards got their cat cards. They're good for them. I'm happy for them. Cool. But while I can have that opinion, I also think that they should stop wasting their time on these stupid, just constant one after another product where people are just like, they have to pay attention, they have to care, they have to look into it, they have to maybe buy it, you get wallet fatigue, or you get people getting pissed that, oh, well, I bought this one, this one, this one, I kind of want this one, but I spent too much money, so I can't buy it, but I want it, and that sucks. Wizards, stop releasing so much crap. Um, yeah, they have a little bit of a point there, but what, what do I think they should do instead? Um, have you seen the $100 fetch lands? Hey, dumbasses, if all you care about is money, which clearly Wizards does, why the hell did you get rid of Masters? Especially Modern Masters. I know Iconic and 25 sucked because you sold 10,000 of them to sports and more. They crashed the price, and no matter how much value you would have put into it, they're going to sell them for, like, nothing online, and it, it just ruined the price. Same with like Channel Fireball and all the assholes where they back the truck up, give them a couple pallets of it, and then they liquidate it for a, an impossible to compete with price, which if, if I bought it for, you know, 185, 190 bucks or whatever, and I know that it's, you know, 350 bucks worth of cards by design, like I said, congratulations, everybody's now a magic shop. I mean, some like 13 year old with his parents eBay account is now a, a multi-thousand dollar distributor of magic cards. Multiply that by 10,000. That's a problem. And not everybody's going to be like, no, I'm holding out for 300 They undercut, they undercut, they undercut. And, like, I'm happy with, like, you know, $20 per box profit. So if I start listing them for, you know, lower, 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 and all of a sudden they're going for 210 and then because they're going for 210 everybody legitimately buying them, um, the singles price go down because of that. Crash and kills the whole product, okay? Otherwise, like, if you look in the reality of um, Masters 25, the box EV was over $400, they did put enough value into that product, but then they took the value and flushed it down the toilet because they weren't careful about who they sold it to and where they re resold it and for how much. Not to mention that Sports and More is almost definitely just a distributor operating under another name and just lying about everything and faking the location and all that other crap, which I think they actually just got kicked off of eBay. I, I had heard that. That's a shame. I also heard a rumor they're going to start their own like website or something. Just, just give up, okay? Everybody hates you. You're literally ruining the entire market and every product launch. Like, Wizards should sue you at this point, let alone cut you off. So anyway, that's what went wrong with Masters, in case you were wondering. But then they went to Ultimate Masters. They put, like, $600 worth of value in every box or whatever. They were back to, like, okay, people literally getting into, like, fist fights over pre-orders and stuff. Because, you know, when there's money to be made, there's money to be made. I mean, you look at, like, the uh, the initial Mythic Edition, where people could have sold, like, two boxes for 900 after paying, like, not 900 for them. They're literally getting sued, like, exclusively for the profit that could have been made that these people were counting on. That's how, like, I'd say greedy, but let's just say that's what happens when a lot of money can potentially be made and then you pull the rug out from under people and ruin it. Like, for example, I bought 10 grand, or a little bit more than that, I think, actually, of uh, Battle for Zendikar, which, okay, I'm a bit of a high-volume reseller then, it turns out. I've got a little pull at my uh, distributor, 
you know, compared to other stores, they should prioritize me because I'm a bigger, better customer. And out of the um, 60 fat packs that I ordered, because, you know, full art land packs that were selling pretty good back then, uh, I got zero. They, they lowered my order from 60 to zero and gave them to other people who, uh, you know, like I said, back the truck up and get on, on uh, pallets. So a little bit more than me even. So small local gaming stores got completely screwed on it. Uh, Mid-level like me got completely screwed on it. And they just sent them all the, you know, probably like, I hate to name names, but you guys know, the really big ones. And they could put them on eBay, you know, the, them fat packs were going for 85 bucks. And we pay, I think, I think it was 19 at the distributor level for them. Yeah, everything goes crooked, greedy, and favoritism, and bribes, and, and oh my god, you don't even want to know what goes on in the magic distribution world when there's money to be made. Which, I mean, is another reason that they shouldn't have made unsanctioned the most valuable product ever where you can flip it two to one, you know, just saying. Because then, yeah, ooh, would have been for everybody, and all of a sudden everybody's interested. But that's not in the spirit of the product. So th that is why Masters sucked and why they got rid of it. Because they're like, oh, we just, we can't put together good Masters. It's, it's a failed product, whatever. And then they did UMA and oh my God. So they should have instantly went back on it and brought it back. But at this point, let's look where we are now. $100 fetch lands. All the modern staples are double or triple pretty much across the board if they're in a the current tier one deck. Everything's skyrocketing because Arena brought in more players and more players are like, oh, modern, my friends play modern, cool. And also Standard has been like an unplayable shit show for three years. So people are either jumping into Commander or they're jumping into Modern and Commander staples are through the roof too. So we'll just say other formats, even, even Legacy and Vintage, prices are going insane. Because we've had like two years of no reprints. Although I don't remember when UMA came out, but yeah, it, as soon as they canceled Modern Masters, that's it. And then they printed Modern Horizons with the word modern in it and did literally nothing to help modern prices. What even goes through their heads at Wizards? Where they're like, let's print a modern specific product and do nothing to make modern affordable. In fact, they took that set and made modern more expensive by introducing super limited print run, like only copies of a card. I mean, look how many times fetch lands were printed in how many different sets. Cool. You know, and like Birds of Paradise and like, you know, Snap and Tarm and, you know, all those other cards. Well, if you introduce a new card that people want, but it's only one set and it's the first time we've ever seen it. Yeah, you're going to get some $50 cards in it. Cool. Great. And then because they don't know what, you know, fairness, balance or playtesting is, they, they turn around and ban them all. That's a popular decision after people drop 200 bucks on a play set. So that product was a disaster. It's like, well, that that sucked. People are pissed. Prices are crazy. And you're releasing bullshit that people don't like. I've got a different idea. Bring back Modern Masters, you morons. It is the most win-win product that they could come out with. If they don't screw up distribution. If they're just at a basic level careful about who sells what, when, and at what volume and for what price. Don't give it to the toxic product ruining, economy ruining assholes. Just cut them off. Limit how many you send to Card Kingdom and Channel Fireball and whoever else. And, you know, you won't see them going for 175 on eBay on launch day. As long as you do that and put sufficient value in it, it won't crash. It's that simple. So the reason I say they should make this instead and why it's a win-win is because, okay, cards get destroyed, they get lost, the meta shifts, um, you know, just whatever. Mostly new players enter modern, but, uh, you know, the prices start creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. Well, you can either let people who are card hoarding buyout assholes, investors and speculators, or just the giant singles, you know, people who have libraries of singles. Both those groups, you can let them make all the money. Or, since Wizards doesn't see a dime of that, they can collect the money on the game and the cards that they tested and designed and are currently managing the format for. So, hmm, asshole scalping speculators and single sellers who make enough money or Wizards of the Coast. So you either make, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars or zero. Hmm, that's a tough decision. I can see why they went with, no, we're dropping masters forever. Oh, wait, <laughs> why are fetch lands $100 now? What happened? Ah, uh, there aren't enough to go around, dumbasses. Print some more. And and by the way, you can't put fetch lands in standard unless you want standard to be a thousand bucks a deck. So that's completely out of the question. They are never going to do that again, unless they are like purposely trying to kill off paper forever and go pure digital. But when you have two sources of income, why would you choose to make it one? That's incredibly stupid. And without LGSs promoting it, the game will die. It's that simple. You can't just rely on digital. I think at least two new giant competitors are coming out this year for digital TCGs and uh, Hearthstone's kind of coming back a little bit. 
So yeah, when you're dominating the paper market and crushing Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon, uh, keep it that way. But um, yeah, the fetch lands need to be what props up something. I can't put them in a draft set because then people would just buy it up. Nobody would be able to draft with it. And it would be just, it just would be Bonner Masters at that point. Or if that was the only money in it, people would uh, money draft it. Like, even if it's an off-color one, you're going to be like, well, I just paid 30 bucks to draft this and this is an $80 card. Yeah, I think I'll draft that. And then they kind of like rune slash spike the draft on purpose because, you know, it's literally higher than the prize money. And then they don't really get to fully play the draft and, and win the way they should have with pure skill and, and optimized choices. And yes, there are ways around it, but generally it's a, it's a bad idea to put huge, huge value into a set that's intended for a different purpose. And I mean, do they really think that if they put, you know, one fetch in every commander deck that that's going to supply the entire world with enough fetches to go around? No, especially the people who, who buy the decks need the fetch land to run the deck, kind of. So it's like, where do you put it? It has to be a reprint set. And then they just announced that Modern Horizons is not a reprint set. So they're, they're just never going to print fetch lands ever again. Or any modern staple that just went from 10 bucks to 50 bucks. It's like, you, you have to do it. It's literally free money, dude. Just, just print it and collect the money. And like I said, it's win-win. Everybody who buys it makes money. They sell it and pocket a ton of money. And then everybody who wants to play modern, it's now half the price. And they, they win. I guess the people who are like holding the deck don't win because your $1,000 modern deck just overnight became a $500 modern deck. But I always tell people, as much as people like to complain about, oh, they just killed the value of my deck. Oh, this is so terrible. When were you going to disassemble and sell that deck? Because we both know the answer is never. I mean, if you quit the game, cool, but like, I mean, if you buy a boat and then you run around and fish with it for three years and then sell it, you can't expect to get the same price you paid for it. The same is true for just about anything else. You use it, you bought it, you paid for it, you got value out of it, you got years of playtime, maybe won some packs. Nowhere in the fine print of magic are they guaranteeing that you can get your money or more, that it's a, a guaranteed investment, okay? With the aggressive reprints from a couple years ago, in fact, you should have known the exact opposite would be true. And honestly, if they just consistently have a reprint policy where any card that hits 20, 30 bucks, they will put it in the next set and then do one to two, you know, reprint sets a year... You can buy a, a, a deck for 500 bucks and then it'll creep up a little bit in six, seven, then they reprint it back down to five. And then, then oh, it creeps up a little bit and, and then it goes down to five, like across the board on average. So actually, if they reprint well enough to keep, you know, Commander and Modern affordable, then you actually can reasonably expect to buy a deck and get approximately the same value out of it. Because the, the prices will be like controlled and suppressed via reprints. Now that's if they do it responsibly and don't just reprint a card to death and make a $20 card, a $1 card, and then leave it there. But yeah, if every time a card gets too expensive, they, they bat it back down with a, a, a reprint, like an aggressive reprint, you know, not in the mythic slot. That would guarantee the affordability and not let decks swing wildly in value up to double and half and all this because... Then buying and building a modern deck would become like a stock market thing. I mean, you'd have to like think about the value and when you're buying it and just just buy it when you want to play it and build it. How about that? Like, wouldn't that be nice? And oh, look, it's always consistently affordable. Cool. Like it, it would be the ideal scenario. And like I said, the whole time Wizards is just collecting mountains, wheelbarrows full of money. And they're the ones popularizing, you know, the game and the format and keeping it going and doing all the marketing and acquiring, you know, new players and designing arena and everything they're doing. In my opinion, to a certain extent, they deserve to collect the money on, oh, there's more players now, modern prices went up, cool, let's cash in. And I know for a fact they get really mad when other people than them are cashing in on, on a game or format success. Because, I mean, it's their game, they designed it, they're supporting the format, they're making the ban list, they're running the stats, they're managing it, they're running the commercials on YouTube. Yeah, to hand 100% of the profits over to somebody else? No, no, they're, they need to do reprints. So, do I think that they should have made Unsanctioned? At a very basic level, yes, it's for some people, it's not for everyone. Do I think they should have put value into it? No, I mean, understandably, putting a little bit more would have been nice, but it's for who it's for. Who's going to buy it is who's going to buy it. It's super small, and when the vast majority of people say it's not for me, I don't like it, they need to just brush it off and be like, yes, that's what it is. But at a higher level, should they have wasted time and, and just... You know, they could only make so many products in a year, so should they have wasted a product slot for this instead of a, a valuable reprint set that'll sell 50 times more? 
Now, I would have went with Modern Masters 2020 Edition, actually. I, I would have released that instead of this. So there's nothing wrong with the product other than the fact that they never should have made it, but not for the reason that everybody's complaining about. So in other words, everybody's wrong. Everyone on both sides of the issue is, is at least partially wrong in their opinion because at, at the highest level, this is not what they should have been making or focusing on or collecting money for. It's, it's just not. And if they like did all of the stuff that they did lately for side products and then also did Masters, people only have so much money. So I would have kicked this out. In fact, if you look at the importance and the market reach and the, the like uh, customer base reception of all the products they've released in the last two years, this is the least important one that has the least reach. Nobody needs these cards. They're, they're useful in the least number of formats because, you know, none of them are legal to play anywhere. So this would have been number one on the chopping block if I had to replace a product and instead print something actually good like Modern Masters. Or, I mean, Commander cards going up too. I, I really should be saying Eternal Masters. So they either need to pull a 180 and say we're bringing Modern Masters back or Eternal Masters, whatever, something Masters, call it whatever the hell you want as long as it's reprints, or pull a 180 on what Modern Horizons is and bring out Modern Horizons 2 and put some reprints in it. And, I mean, add new cards plus reprints? I mean, sure, if that's what you want to do. They completely screwed it up the first time by printing a bunch of overpowered crap that had to get banned later, which everybody saw this and they're like, well, that's going to be a problem. So, I mean, they, they don't know shit about, you know, playtesting or, or balanced card designing or whatever. And they still keep thinking that, like, mill artifact affinity and, like, dredge and graveyard shit is, like, fun, interesting gameplay that should be promoted. When in reality, ask the community, those decks need to drop dead. So if they could just get a clue about it, they could make Modern Horizons not crap. So hopefully within a year, and I mean a year, like it's already out of control, so preferably within like a month, but within 2020, they need to print something that isn't a stupid waste of time like Unsanctioned and that actually helps card availability. That or Modern's is going to fail. They, literally, they will lose like half their customers who play Modern within a year or two if they don't do something about it because they're just pricing people out of it completely. In fact, they're losing customers at an accelerated rate because people are looking at their, you know, $300 deck that's now a $1,000 deck and they're like, you know, I've got bills. Or like, I just had a kid. I've got a car to buy. I owe the IRS money. I've got a medical bill. Yeah, time to cash in. I mean, a 200% return on investment. Maybe I don't need to play modern. You know what I mean? People are selling out like crazy, which means that the ones who are paying triple to buy into the damn format now have less people to play with. So then they're leaving. And like, it's a cascading quick collapse thing. You do not want modern to die. That would be bad because then the, the singles will fall if there's literally dom no demand for them. That, that would be bad. So now for the, the really entertaining part, um, let, let's read what people had to say now that you know that everybody's wrong. So uh, to paraphrase a lot of people on Twitter here, uh, some people said that the whole this product is not for you is really not great. Like they, they took offense to that. Um, it used to be about oh everything's for everyone. And yeah, can we go back to that? And then Mark Rosewater basically replied like, no, like that's what standard legal is. Like we're making smaller audience products deal with it. And he's absolutely correct. Other, other than, like I said, the fact that they shouldn't be wasting time on this. They should be printing what's actually needed. But, you know, income-wise, it's such a drop in the bucket, they can make it as specific as they want in a small run as they want. At least the people who want it are happy, you know, like, yeah. But that said, the community is a, a good point that it's not a good look where they say, this product isn't for you. Like, that's, that is kind of bad. Somebody else said, if you're getting enough comments about the land to warrant saying something, maybe it's time to put the dessert somewhere else too. So that's another person who thinks, yeah, you should have put the value in not just the lands. And then that flew so far over Mark Rosewater's head that he replied, well, we've put full art lands in a whole bunch of products. Unglued, Unhinged, Unstable, Zendikar, Battle for Zendikar, Amon Cat, which... Really? Did, did I, am I just remembering that wrong? Uh, <laughs> Modern Horizons, the Snowlands, which I, I don't remember them being full either. I guess they were. I don't know. Uh, Theros Beyond Death, depending upon how you count the Nyx lands. Yeah, I do. Um, odds are I'm forgetting something here. Yeah, you're forgetting that he just said put the value in more than just the lands because, one, nobody wants these lands. They're not good enough, cool enough looking. And, and two... Like he, he literally just said, don't make it just the lands. And you're like, oh, but we put full art lands. I don't, I don't even know what Mark meant by that. Oh, we tried to add value, but we played that card too much, putting fancy lands in. And now the, the market for fancy lands is just not good enough to like prop up the set. Is that what he's saying? Like you should have put the money elsewhere. Go play to tokens or something. Just saying. And a bunch of replies to that were like, wow, you missed the mark on that. Like literally one of the replies was not all full art lands are created equal though. In other words, the card frame is ugly, they're not full bleed, and the art is nothing special, like exactly like I said. 
Then somebody said, I'm more worried about the inclusion of Booster Tutor, which makes the black half deck unable to be played without additional purchases. So it's like the, the, the product costs more than it costs on the surface. And then Mark replies, well, you can grab 15 cards from the un unused half deck. Um, you could. I mean, that's not what the card says, <laughs> but you could. I, mean, I could pull 15 cards on my trade binder too, but that's not what the card says. Ooh, he's getting snarky with these. You can tell he's pretty offended that people are tearing apart every last detail of this product. When in reality, like I said, it's not for everyone. He knows this. Anybody who says something negative about it, the correct answer is this product was not for you. Just get over it. Don't take it personally. Don't try to Wizards of the Coast explain it to people about how they're wrong and it is a great product. Some people get it, though. Uh, Daniel something or other on Twitter says, uh, when you buy a sealed non-magic board game, which is basically what this is, he's comparing it to like the, the game night or whatever, uh, for 40 to 50 bucks, do you worry about the long-term value of the purchase? No. You play it a bunch of times and get your entertainment out of it. Why is this different? There we go. Somebody gets it. This isn't a value bomb. This isn't a loss leader marketing thing where you like underprice it and try to get people into the game. It's like a teach you how to play thing or like the, the Planeswalker decks or the dual decks, which just got people into the game, you know, where, where the whole intention is play and, and customers and, and, you know, get new people into it, intro people into it. No, this is like for existing players. It's a small subset of people and the, it is what it is. This is just a buy it and play it product. And the value is in the entertainment. He was absolutely correct. But at the same time, everybody's completely wrong and they should have made Modern Masters. <laughs> Other people making fun of the whole, this product isn't for you. Somebody said, oh, that seems to be Wizards of the Coast motto lately. And that got a lot of likes. Another person quoted that the whole, this product might, might not be for you. And they say, well, it could have been if you would have tweaked it a little bit and put a little bit more value in it. But see, then it wouldn't be what it is. It's like, yeah, it would be nice. But then people who shouldn't be interested, it would be buying it up. And that, that turns into a shitstorm, as I said. In fact, one of the very next replies is, yeah, then people would have bought the box just for the land. So it's clear that the product is not for everyone. It's for it's who it's for. And it's a silver bordered experience and buy it for the experience. I mean, thankfully, some people get it. Other people are like, yes, this is a game in a box, box style product. That's what it is. People need to shut up. And then somebody else who still kind of has a point in all caps says, it costs you literally nothing to make them full art. I love silver bordered cards and I love the cards from the set, but this gives zero reason for this call. In other words, like he, he wanted both. He wanted to buy the silver bordered stuff and also get value out of it, which uh, that does seem reasonable to me. I mean, just saying, I mean, they don't got to make it worth a hundred bucks where they overinflated on purpose to sell it like from the vault, but like making it not worth $3 on resale would be nice. Another person saying the focus was not money. The focus is, is not full art lands. It's not resale. It's, it's an unset. Get over it. Buy it. If you want it. Other people are like this is going into my uncube. Other people can piss off. I'm buying it. Get over it. Once again, everybody's right. Everybody has a point and everybody's wrong. They shouldn't have made this product. They should have made modern masters. Once again, to summarize, I think you get it. This is just another PR black eye where uh, it's just more negative press where people on the outside looking in thinking, oh, I wonder if I should look into this magic thing. They just look at negativity from everyone on every side, including the staff, everybody complaining about how a disaster the product is and how they don't want it and aren't going to buy it. They might not understand the whole background of this like I just explained in this video. In fact, most of you probably didn't get it until you understand distribution and EVs and intention and target markets and demos and um like yearly portfolio percentages and stuff, or I don't know what you call it. If it's um, not something you hold um, money sources, I don't, I should know this. God, I know accounting profit centers. I think that's it. Yeah. This product was never meant to be a profit center. That's why, you know, somebody else tweeted good. I'm glad you're seemingly getting annoyed at the rumblings. I'm also glad people are getting vocal about how tired they are of these types of bull that wizards of the coast pulls. We're sick of it. Stop making excuses and start giving the players what they want. He's also simultaneously right and wrong. What people want is, is value and reprints and to be able to play modern. They don't want this. Most people don't want this. That said, this is designed so that most people don't want it, but the people who do want it really appreciate it. And those people are finally happy that they're finally getting some attention. And Wizards doesn't care because this product is not a profit center. So yeah, just bad all around. I mean, it's like cool, great for the people who want this and bought it and finally got something funny and silly to play with instead of the same old, same old, I'm happy for you. But catering to the people who want to afford to play modern is, is more important, bigger, and it's going to make more money for wizards. So there's more reasons for them to have done that than to have made this. And th that's just the reality of it. At a certain point in the year, you got to go where the money is and the, the small, narrow, specific collector's you know, niche market crap. It could have just been secret layer for the year and that's it. I mean, just saying.
I mean, then there was signature spellbook Gideon. I mean, they, they made enough that were for small, tiny people's collectors and that kind of stuff. Just saying. So seriously, y'all need to get on social media and start telling wizards, we need reprints from modern, bring back masters, bring back eternal masters, bring back modern masters. That's what we want. That's what we need. Do you guys not like money? I mean, just put 500 bucks in a box and take, take a list of the top 25 most expensive modern cards and add them to the list, print it absolutely to death and collect a paycheck. Like it just, it's not hard. The um, pretty reasonable sounding rumor that Hasbro is putting pressure on them to put out more and more and more products. I think what they mean at the end of the day is put out more products so that you can sell more and make more money. If they just put out one product that made a buttload of money, I think they'd get off your ass wizards about, oh, bring up more products. You need to monetize this more. I mean, we all know that one of the things that Wizards of the Coast is focusing on with or without, you know, nudging from Hasbro to do so is uh, intellectual property leasing. I mean, Netflix, game after game after game after game, mobile game, the, there was the, the, the other one that was canceled. Then you got the alleged MMO. They're making money on all that. And it's just intellectual property. It's just brand recognition that they're, you know, pocketing money on. Not to mention that it's a double-edged sword. I mean, they made the Witcher thing for Netflix, and all of a sudden the Witcher 3 sold more than it did when it released because people saw it on Netflix and wanted to play the game. So as much as Netflix paid for the intellectual property rights from the author and from the company who made the game, um, they actually made them more money. So it's like, j just stick to that for like, oh, we're doing, quote, more things to get more money and monetize it wider and stop printing a new thing every month. It's not the piggy bank that you should be dipping into. So like I said, if Hasbro's up their ass about profitability and like losing players and all that stuff, I mean, one, Arena's blown up, so they should shut up. And two, if they just want to get a quarter billion dollars, just Modern Masters, ta-da! Like seriously, get a clue, Wizards. Like, geez, it, there's no excuse for this. And I know, we all know their excuse was, eh, Iconic Masters and Masters 25 didn't do very well, so we're giving up, we're taking our ball and going home. Find out what went wrong and clean it up. My God, D you abandoned the product after two tries. Are you kidding me? Step one, don't sell it to sports and more. Step two, that's it. That's the only step, actually. There you go. Problem solved. Ta-da. Don't sell them to Rudy, either. Like, any any asshole moving over a thousand of them online, just cut them off. Hell, cut my ass off. I'm making too much money flipping these. Oh, y'all know I closed my shop like a year ago, right? I no longer have a distributor account, so I haven't been selling shit. But yeah, that is the entirety of the picture of why everybody's mad, why everybody's wrong, and, and simultaneously right, why they, like, they have a point, but in the larger scale, no... That's why Wizards needs to get a clue, everybody needs to get a clue, and, you know, good for you for getting a clue watching this video. I know these economic math, you know, distribution history heavy videos don't uh, appeal to everybody, but they also get a ton of views and a lot of thumbs up. So, for those of you who appreciate this little peek behind the curtain into how things really work, I'm glad I could still provide it, despite, you know, not being an LGS anymore, or a distributor, but, you know, I've been in the game long enough to know how it works, and, uh... Yeah, basically, thanks for getting informed, educated, and uh, watching. And uh, if you did like this video, leave a big ol' uh, like on it. That always helps uh, visibility to the public. And uh, subscribe for more videos like this. And, uh, well, this channel does just about everything. Decks, gameplay, news, spoilers, um, long format documentaries about distribution, everything. There's something for everybody, so you might as well subscribe. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.